Hey, Shalom, brothers and sisters, it's Abiel. It's me, Kanai. Uh, today we're going to go over a subject that's uh, heavily needed amongst Israel right now, dealing with the name of the Father and the name of the Son. You have a lot of splits, a lot of divisions amongst brothers and sisters behind this subject, and hopefully today, once we go through these scriptures, the Bible, a lot of you all will be able to see that these disputes, these, these strivings, is for, it's all vain, okay? <clears throat> no one knows the name. And we're going to show you through the Spirit, through the Scriptures, thus saith the Lord, that nobody knows the name. I, if I might, I'll be able to say something. Uh, we know the name, Jesus Christ is not his name. Right. Like we know the name, Yahweh Shai is not his name, like the name Yeshua is not his name. After this video is posted, please, brothers and sisters, please do not post no dumb comments. I, just, I, I really ain't in for it. If you got a scriptural reference that you want to make point of, by all means, you're welcome. We want to hear. It. But if you want to babble on with the same dribble, drabble, babble without scripture, please spin. All right? All right. So, what are we going to do? We're going to start at Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1.22. Like the elder just said, dealing with, if you're going to make posts, make sure you explain the scriptures that were given. What happens a lot of times is, it's like your brothers will hear the scripture, and you will ignore it. Like, oh, I didn't hear that just now. But you still want to go on and talk about what you're talking about. you got to explain the scriptures. You, you cannot erase scriptures out of the Bible. You have to deal with it, all right? So we're going to deal with it today. And, and you'll see, we're going to deal with it. Because you somebody made a comment about a scripture, and use the scripture, and we're going to actually go to the scripture and explain. We're not going to run from the scripture. We're going to run to the scriptures. Right. All right, so you want me to probably one? 122. It says, how long will you simple ones love simplicity? The Bible's asking you, it says, how long ye simple ones will you love simplicity? How long are you going to like to stay dumb? How long are you going to love stupidity? That's what the Bible's saying. Read on. And a scorner delight in their scorner. It says, and the scorners delight in a scorner. You know what a scorner is? A scorner is someone who comes up against the word of the Most High. And I know it may not feel like that, but anytime you step outside of the Bible and you speak against these words of the Most High, you're scorning. You you see you see us saying, oh, the name doesn't matter, uh, just keep the commandments and faith in Christ as Israelites, and you scorn at that. Oh, no, brother, that's not going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. No, that's not what's going to make it, but you refuse to do the commandments. That's nonsense. Read on. This is in fools hate knowledge. And fools hate knowledge. Fools hate the doctrine. Fools hate the doctrine of the, the Bible, the truth, sound doctrine. Fools hate to know, thus saith the Lord. Though you've been living this way for so long, and you've been saying this name, and you felt like you've had all these revelations, and the Most High has done all this stuff for you in your life, but you can't accept the scripture, it means nothing. Fools hate knowledge. Fools hate to know. From there, go real quick to, um, go to Psalms 111. Because we're going to establish something real quick. Brothers say they have the understanding. Brothers say you know what they're talking about. Okay. Well, then this must apply to you then. Psalms 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read on. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Read. His praise endureth forever. So if you have good understanding, meaning you keep the commandments. So a brother should be able to see your works. Brothers should see, okay, this brother understands you're supposed to have a beard on your face. You're, supposed to, uh, you're not supposed to tattoo your body. Brothers are supposed to wear fringes in the, in the border of blue. Brothers' wives must not be in pants. These are certain commandments. These are, these are Hebrew 101 commandments that brothers should be able to automatically see, okay, let me listen to this brother's godly discourse because he's keeping the commandments. But you have a brother that don't keep the commandments, but you got all this wisdom. Well, the Bible just said that's not possible. Because what does it say? A good understanding what? Have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they to do his commandments. There's not one brother or sister that has an understanding of this Bible that is not keeping the Most High's commandments. So you can't tell me about anybody about the Most High's name. You can't tell me about the prophecies or the revelations, all this nonsense, other stuff. Because what? You don't know it. You do not have the understanding. Unless you say the Bible's a lie and you're true. Because from what I'm, I'm gathering here, they're saying... If you're not keeping the commandments, you can't understand this Bible. That's right. So which one is it? Which one is it? You cannot willingly break God's commandments. Mind you, we all were in sin. We all have to repent for the sins we've done. But when, you are, when, when you're tattooing uh, your howl on your arm, or if you're smoking drugs, 
or if you are bald in your head, even though you might be losing your head, but you're bald in your head, bald, right. if you are half naked on your Facebook page, please, the Spirit of the Most High cannot be. If you got no beard on, the Spirit of the Most High cannot be on you Same. to give you the understanding of this name. Right. So if it's not the Most High on you, then what is on you? You tell me. Right. Let's go. From there, go to um, Zephaniah 3. We're going to get right into this. Uh, Zephaniah or Zechariah? Zephaniah. Zephaniah, sorry. Zephaniah 3. We're going to get right into dealing with the scriptures pertaining to the name. Like we covered earlier, after you all watch this video, you want to leave comments explaining the scriptures with the scriptures. I don't want to hear, no, uh, oh, well, this is how I feel, and you get to talking off the top of your head, and this is that. No, you have to use the scriptures to explain it. Read that. Zephaniah 3 and 9. So what, you said you want 8? Start at 8. I'm sorry. You're right. Therefore, wait upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Now, wait a minute. Now, this prophecy, this is a prophecy pertaining to the end days. And how do we know that? Real quick, go to Joel. Chapter 3. Joel's the third chapter. I want to start at the. Just start at verse 1. Joel 3 and 1. Joel. Chapter 3. Verse. One. And it says, For behold, in those days and at that time will I bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. So the Most High said, In those days and in that time, after he brings the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, after the Israelites have gone back into captivity, as we've had, a lot of you all understand Deuteronomy 28, read. I will also gather all nations. He's going to gather all nations, all these other people, the Edomites, the, the Kenyanites, the Hamites. He's going to gather all these nations, read. And bring them down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. The Valley of Jehoshaphat, meaning the Valley of Decision. This is also known as Armageddon. Read on. And I will plead with them there for my people, for my heritage Israel. He said he's going to plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel. Read. Whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. Whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. The Most High is going to gather these nations and plead with them. Well, how is he going to plead? Go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah chapter 66. Start at verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire with a chariot like a world. Has, this, chariots, ha has like this happened yet? It says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind, read, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And his rebuke with flames of fire, read on. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, read, and the slain of the Lord shall be men. Has this taken place yet? No, this is a future prophecy when the Most High is going to gather the nations together and deal with them with fire. Go back to Zephaniah 3, verse 8 again. Zephaniah 3 and 8. Read. And it says, Therefore wait upon the me, saith the Lord, until that, until that I raise up to the prey, sorry, that I raise up to the prey for my determination and gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. Even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. With the fire of my jealousy. The Most High says, He said, He is, for my determination is to gather the nations. Gather the nations, like we read back in Joel. He's going to gather the nations together and plead with them there for His people. How does He plead? With fire and by His sword. This is a future prophecy. It says that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour out my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. The Most High is coming back with fire. All right? This is a future prophecy. This has not happened yet. Verse 9. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. Wait a minute. It says for then and that time after he does this, he's going to turn to the people a pure language. This has not happened yet. The Israelites do not have a pure language. Neither has he gathered the nations together. Have you not noticed? We're still in captivity. He has not given us a pure language yet. Read on. So wait a second. The pure language wouldn't be English. No. So we speak a, a pure language English. 
If you speak in Hebrew, you're speaking a pure language because he says he'll give you back a pure language. Remember, right. and you know what? I want to say this real quick. In the time of Zephaniah and all the prophets back then, one thing that we don't have in common to those times, when we, in all our captivity, we never forgot our language. Right. We never forgot our heritage. When we was under the Babylonians, we still spoke Hebrew. Yep. We didn't forget it. When we was in the time of Cyrus, we knew Hebrew. Under the Act, under Egyptians, we knew Hebrew. Assyrians, we knew Hebrew. Only time we lost it is when we came to this Western Hemisphere. That's, right. That's why this prophecy is talking about the last days. We're speaking these bastard tongues that we learned. So he says, going to return to us a pure language that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve Him with one consent. It says that they so. When you get that pure language, now you've got the ability to call upon the name of the, of the Lord to serve Him with one consent. Right now, what is it? you got brothers over here. They want to say Yahuwah. This brother says Yahweh. This brother says Yahweh. Jehovah. Whatever it is that you're saying, it, we're not on one consent as far as the language. We're not there because no one knows the name. All those names are not the true name. And we're going to show you through the Spirit and the Scriptures, the Bible tells you nobody knows the name. From there, go to uh, Revelations 3 real quick. Revelations chapter 3. Start at verse 12. Verse 12. And this, this is imperative because what brothers don't understand is you're trying to, to basically step over the words of the Most High. The Bible will say this, but you say, no, 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 I got, I'm deep. I'm so deep. I got the understanding when the Bible said I ain't supposed to have the understanding or I'm not going to have the understanding. It's like brothers years ago would say the year 2000. Right. And the Bible said no man don't know the time. <laughs> Somebody get deep and say we know the time. You do the same thing. Uh, Revelations 3 verse 12. Really? It says him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. So here we go. Here's the stipulation. Him that overcometh, meaning he that makes it into the kingdom of heaven, him that endures until the end, will he make a pillar in the temple of my God. This is Christ speaking. Read on. And I will, and I shall, and he shall go no more out. He's gonna. He's not gonna go out no more. He's not going back. Once you make it, that's it. You've made it. You made it to the kingdom of heaven. Read on. And I'll write upon him the new name of my God. Read that again. And I'll write upon him the new name of my God. It says, now I will write upon him the name of my God. So, and I'll write upon him the name of my God. Right. Read on. And the name of the city of my God. Read on. Which is New Jerusalem. So wait a minute. He says he's going to write upon him the name of my God. To that man that overcomes, he's going to give that man the name. He's going to tell them the name. This is the same thing matching right back up with Zephaniah 3 and 9, dealing with we're going to receive a pure language that we may call upon the name of the Most High with one consent. Read on. It says, And, I, and upon him will I write the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. Read on. And I will write upon him my new name. It says, And that man, he's going to write upon that man his new name. So here we go. Christ is giving you the, the name of his father. He's giving you the name of this of New Jerusalem. And he's giving you his new name. So wait a minute. Which one of you Israelites going to be standing there it, it, with palms in your hand and the white robes on that day when Christ comes to you to tell you the name of his father, the name of the city of Jerusalem, and his new name? Which one of y'all going to stand up and say, Oh, wait up, no, uh, Yahweh or Yeshua, Yeshia? I don't know your name. Let everybody else know. I, I was deep. Which one of y'all going to stand up and do that? Nobody. The scripture says no one knows. Give me uh, Revelation 19. Start at verse 11. Scripture says no one knows the name. 19 to what? 11. Revelation 19 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So this is John the Revelator. He's writing down everything that he saw. When you read Revelations 1, Christ told him, Everything thou seest, John, write in a book. So he's writing everything down that he's seen. He saw um, heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. This was Christ. Read on. His eyes were as the flame of fire. Same thing you read back in Revelations 1. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Read. And on his head were many crowns. And on his head he had many crowns. Christ got many titles. King of kings, Lord of lords, the Lamb, the Prince of Peace. 
the Alpha and the Omega. The he, sure. Right. The, uh, um, he is the truth. The, exactly. He has many names. He had many, he had a, a, many crowns upon his head, read. It says, and he had a name written. Uh oh. That no man knew but he himself. No, a few brothers knew it. I thought what it just said. It said a few brothers knew it. There was a few elect brothers that knew the name, right? Let me read that again. It says, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. It says he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And who's going to get, who's gonna get that name? He that overcome it when he returned to him the pure tongue. We just read it. Revelation the third chapter and the twelfth verse. These are the scriptures that brothers and sisters refuse to go to and explain the scripture. Because it's blunt. Most high told us he gave us straight commandments. This Bible, this Bible is straight up. It still tell you exactly what it is. And even the brothers today that are applying the commandments through the faith of Messiah, you don't got the name either. That's right. You'll get it when that day when you overcome. When you endure until the end. Brothers want, I'm testing now for the other brothers that just want to be arguing about this and making stuff like that. Listen to me, I said this before. If you are keeping the commandments in the faith of the Messiah, you say Yeshua, I'm with you, brother. If you say Yahweh Shai, I'm with you. And if you're keeping the commandments. If you say Jesus Christ, I'm with you. I'm keeping the, if you keep the commandments. You say Jehovah, and you're keeping the commandments. Believing on the black Messiah. Not right. that line white image. Right. At, that we are the Israelites keeping the commandments. I'm with you. Notice what we have in common is the keeping the commandments and faith that the Messiah died for us. I'm with you. And in that day, we're going to get that name. But you brothers want to hold on to that and let go of the commandments. The name ain't going to get you the kingdom of heaven. To apply the commandments of the faith in it will get you that. That's right. Yeah. So, brother, you, you, what was happening is, like, that scripture you pulled in Matthew 23. Let's get that real quick. Matthew's, Matthew's 23, 23. You brothers are basically saying, you know what? I got the name, but the commandments, nah. That's not going to make it. That's not what's going to make it. Nobody's perfect. That's the excuse. It can't nobody do it. Christ said, be ye perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. I'm going to be over-righteous. Right. Yeah. Keeping the commandments is over-righteous. All right. You won't eat pork, but you refuse to celebrate, to keep the high holy days. You made it to Leviticus 11, but you didn't quite make it to Leviticus 23. This is like the, the blatant blasphemy that comes out your mouth. But you got the name. You understand. Yeah, you don't eat pork. You got Leviticus, but you, but you miss numbers where you said we're fringes. Right. You miss X's where you said don't board your head. You miss the, the, the Sabbath day we're supposed to be keeping it. But brothers, I, it's, it's hypocrisy. Right. It's, it's hypocrisy. And so we do this video straight, trust me, this is out of love for people. That's right. We hope that people can grasp this and it can wrap around your mind and you can get what's needful for salvation. What do you want me to read? Uh, Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weighty matters of the law. There's Christ getting on to the Pharisees. They were hypocrites. They were doing all this other stuff. And when it came to the law, they weren't applying it. I'm sorry. They was like, they wasn't, and then it wasn't judging the weighty matters either. They was not applying the commandments of the Most High. And I want to say this because I've heard a statement say, Brother, you're like a Pharisee. You know something? <clears throat> what you don't realize? Is that the difference with the Pharisees? The Pharisees talked about the laws, but they didn't keep it. We actually talk about the law. We apply the laws to our life. And even Yeshua said, "Do as they say. As they command you to do, do it." Right. So we command you to keep the commandments, and we're lying in hypocrisy. Still keep the commandments. Right. Apply it to your life. It says. It says, and have omitted the weighty matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, faith. These ought you have done and not to leave the other undone. Read on. It says, ye blind guides. Ye blind guides. What is a blind guide? You trying to show you trying to show me the, the way to go with your hands over your eyes. You can't see. Read on. It says, with strain at a knot and, at a net and swallow a camel. You strain at a net, something just itty bitty, but you swallow a whole camel. You still going to say, oh, you got to say the name, the name, the name, brother, you got to understand. Won't have not one scripture to prove it, but you are blatantly breaking the Lord's Sabbath day. Oh, that's nothing. It's not a big deal. That's real big. Are you serious? Real quick, go to, um, give me Pro Proverbs 30 real quick. Proverbs chapter 30.